What's up everybody, it's Rob from The Basement Bike Shop and today I'm going to show you how to put a brand new complete BMX bike together right out of the box. Now, putting a brand new bike together is not that hard. They come partially assembled, um, tires are installed on the wheels, the cranks installed, chains installed, back wheels installed, fork, headset, stem installed. So really it's just putting them the minor pieces on and then dialing the whole thing in. Um, I actually use like a minimal amount of tools to do this. A little bit of grease, a pedal wrench or a 15 millimeter, a 17 millimeter socket with an extension, and then two Allen wrenches maybe. Oh, three because I've built in chain tensioners. Now when you pull your complete out of the box, it'll look something like this. This isn't the bike we're putting together. Um, first thing you do is strip away all the cardboard and take all the pieces and separate them. Sometimes the brakes are connected to the handlebars, sometimes they're not. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is disconnect them anyway. That way it's just out of our way and we don't kink the cable when we're assembling the bike. So the first thing we're going to do is turn all our barrel adjusters in, starting with the one on the lever. You're going to loosen the lock nut and then tighten or screw in the barrel adjuster. And then you're going to do the same with the one on the frame. Loosen the lock nut and then turn in the barrel adjuster. Now if your brakes do not come assembled, I'll show you how to do that later. Then we're going to disconnect the straddle cable by pushing the brake pads together and pulling out whichever end comes out. Sometimes both come out, sometimes only one does. On this one, both of them do. And then we're going to go back to the lever. And you're going to turn the lock nut and the barrel until the slot lines up with the slot in the lever. And then you're just going to pull the some slack in the cable. Feed the cable out. And then feed the end of the cable out of the hole in the bottom of the lever. I'm going to do this whole build without my bicycle repair stand. I didn't have one most of my life. Um, and I'm just going to show you how I did things without it. So the next thing I do is take off the top part of the stem with my six millimeter. Now you always want this to go back on the same way it came off. And a lot of times it looks symmetrical. So what I always do is I take my back right bolt completely out. That way, when I put it back on, I know exactly how it goes back on. Now you want to make sure that the gnarl in the bar lines up with the center of the stem. A lot of times, in most cases, uh, the gnarl in the bar is in the center of the handlebars. So it's a good indication of how to, how to do it. Then we're going to hand tighten the bolts first just to make sure that they're all threaded in correctly. And then we're going to snug them up. We're not going to tighten it down yet because we have to make sure that the cap is running parallel to the rest of the stem. And what I mean by that is when you look at the gap, you want to make sure that the front gap is the same as the back. Then you're just going to tighten it up in a star pattern, jumping diagonally. Um, I tighten it up pretty tight at this point but um, you probably still want to set the angle of your bars for now I just set it with the angle of my fork I really just want to get the bars on and then get the seat on so that I can flip the bike upside down and then assemble the rest of it on this bike our seat post clamp is built in and you can see there's a line on the seat post marking the minimal amount of seat post that has to be in the bike. Um, always remember that. So if you, if you cut your seat post, then you have to have more of your seat post than that minimal line in your bike. Now for now, we're going to set it kind of high just so that we can use it as a stand. If your seat post is still too short to get your back wheel off the ground when you flip it over, then just put um, like a brick or something underneath the seat to, to get it just that little bit higher. Now installing a pivotal seat, you'll see that there's a hole in the top where you stick the Allen wrench. 
that will screw the bolt into the seat post. We'll put a little grease on the threads. And then screw it down. Again, if you don't know the angle of your seat right now, you can wait until we get both wheels on it and get it on the ground. We're just getting it on to use it as a stand. So after you get the seat tightened up, we're going to take the bike and flip it upside down. If you want to reconnect the brakes at this time, you can. You're just going to start at the lever, feeding the cable in. And then go back to the straddle cable, making sure all of your cable housings are locked into the barrel adjusters and then reconnect your straddle cable. Next, we're gonna set our chain tension and back wheel. And the first thing we have to do is put any pegs on that go on the back. So we're gonna loosen our axle nut, our 17 millimeter, and then take that all the way off. And then with plastic sleeve pedals, make sure you take any washers out. All it's going to do is cause your plastic sleeve to unlock. And I'll show you about that when we move to the front peg. Then you're going to put your extension on and put your axle nut in the socket. And then by hand, get the thread started so that you don't cross thread it. But we're going to leave it a little loose so we can set our chain tension with our chain tensioners. We're going to loosen up the other side, just, you know, again, just a little loose so that it can slide. And then we're going to take our Allen wrench and you can see how it changes the chain tension. So all we're going to do is set it to where we want it. Now rotate your crank as you check your chain. Your chain will have a tighter spot and a loose spot. Um, there's no perfect sprocket out there, so you're always going to have that. Um, and then set it to your tight spot. You want your tightest point to not be too tight. And then once you got that established, tighten up your axle nut on your drive side. And then adjust your tire till it's in the center with your non-drive side chain tensioner. And then tighten down the non-drive side. Moving on to the front wheel. Um, this wheel has inverted axle nuts, axle bolts or female hubs, however you wanna say it. Um, but same thing. Uh, first thing we're going to do is take our washer off and put our peg on. It also has this hub guard. Now, as you can see, the washer is the same size as the insert. So if you do put the washer on, it's going to cause your insert to pop to the inside. Put our axle bolt in our socket. Very similar to the axle nut system. Only this one, we need the peg adapter from 3 8 to 14 millimeter. So we're gonna slide that in and then put our big washer on that locks into our fork. And again, if this was smaller and the same size as the insert, I would take this washer off also. Then we're gonna slide our wheel into the dropouts of our fork. And then the lock washer is gonna lock into the triangle hole. And then we're gonna tighten it down. The one thing you wanna watch is the adapter inside the peg. Make sure that that is still exactly where it's supposed to be as you tighten the whole thing up. 
and then onto the pedals. Now you can see these pedals, or maybe you can't, have a CRR and a CRL on them, showing us right and left. Um, if you don't know, pedals are threaded different. Your right pedal has your normal right-handed thread, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, and your left pedal is the opposite thread. So we're gonna put a little grease on the threads. And then start them by hand. And then take our pedal wrench or a 15 millimeter wrench will work fine. Here's our pedal wrench. 15 millimeter. Now I find the easiest way to tighten is if you can put it at somewhat of an acute angle to the crank arm like this, close to parallel, and then pull away from it or clamp toward it. Onto the left side, you can see that the pedal turns in the other way. So you'll turn it left to go tight. Now, for some reason, your complete bike did not come with the brake cable hooked up. All you're going to do is run your straddle cable around your seat post or in front of it if, if it has a hole through the seat post for the cable to run through. Um, I never really liked that design, but... And then you're going to run your cable through the triangle piece, your straight cable, after you run it through the lever like I showed you. And then you're just going to clamp it down. Um, put all your barrel adjusters in. Leave a tiny gap or somewhat of a gap in your brake pad. And then you can always pull it in a little more if you need to. I like to set my brake so that my lever pulls about halfway to my grip from where it sits. And then the final test is to spin the wheel and make sure that it doesn't rub. Once that's done, we can flip the bike over and then do all of our final adjustments. Adjust our seat post height and our seat angle. Also adjust how our bars and stem are lined up with our tire using the two side stem bolts. We can also adjust the angle of our bars now. I like where mine are at. And then check your tire pressure, um, everything like that. Don't forget to double check and make sure that the cap bolt that goes into your fork on your stem is tight. And the same goes for the crank arm bolts. Um, most of the time they're fine, but always just double check all the bolts that are already installed to make sure that they're tight. And that about wraps it up for this build. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to take this We The People Trust stock and switch it to left hand drive. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe and I'll keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can comment below or send me an email. Thanks for watching.